This is part of a series I call the Making Evidence-Based Medicine Simple Series, or MESS for short. In MESS Minis, we review an essential EBM concept. In this MESS Mini, we will focus on the interpretation of likelihood ratios and how to include them in the clinical decision-making process. A separate MESS Mini reviews the test characteristics, sensitivity, specificity, predictive values of a positive test, and predictive value of a negative test. At the completion of this presentation, you'll be able to describe the strengths and limitations of likelihood ratios when compared to sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values, and utilize a likelihood ratio and a pretest probability of disease to determine a patient's post-test probability of disease. We will use the results of a study conducted by Lane analyzing the accuracy of a non-contrast CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis in the identification of appendicitis. The population is primarily adult patients with suspected appendicitis. The intervention is a non-contrast CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. The criterion standard is the operative report, pathology report, or clinical follow-up. And the outcomes are the test characteristics of the non-contrast CT scan. Essentially, we use tests with a positive and negative outcome to allow us to stratify the patient into high and low risk groups. The test characteristics, sensitivity, specificity, predictive values, and likelihood ratios help to assess how well the diagnostic test accomplishes this risk stratification. We will start with a patient that we assess as having a 20% pretest probability of appendicitis. After assessing disease pretest probability in my patient and deciding which test to order, I find it helpful to think about the specific questions that I need in order to make clinical decisions. The two clinical questions are, what is the likelihood of appendicitis if the CT scan is positive? And what is the likelihood of appendicitis if the CT scan is negative? It is important to understand the impact of the answers to these questions on the management of the patient for each test result before ordering the test. We will keep these two questions in mind as we review the test characteristics. I have reviewed sensitivity and specificity in detail in a separate MESS Mini. I include them here only for comparison to likelihood ratios. Sensitivity is the percentage of patients with disease who test positive. Specificity is the percentage of patients without disease who test negative. Unfortunately, we cannot determine a patient's post-test probability of appendicitis if the CT scan is positive and the post-test probability of appendicitis if the CT scan is negative from the sensitivity and specificity. I have reviewed predictive values of a positive test and predictive value of a negative test in detail in a separate MESS Mini. I include them here only for comparison to likelihood ratios. I prefer the term predictive value of a positive test rather than a positive predictive value because it reminds me that a positive test is in the denominator. Predictive value of a positive test is the percentage of patients with a positive test with the disease. Similarly, I prefer the term predictive value of a negative test rather than negative predictive value because it reminds me that a negative test is in the denominator. Predictive value of a negative test is a percentage of patients with a negative test without the disease. Predictive values provide post-test probability of disease, but only for those with the study's pretest probability or prevalence. For example, if our patient had a pretest probability of 20%, we can't determine our patient's post-test probability from the predictive values of a study with a pretest probability of 50%. Each of the three types of test characteristics have some limitations. Sensitivity and specificity are disease-oriented and not patient-oriented, so that you can't determine your patient's post-test probabilities from them. Predictive values are patient-oriented, but are affected by prevalence and don't give you the post-test probability of disease in your specific patient or patient population. Likelihood ratios are patient-oriented and not affected by prevalence. However, likelihood ratios are odds and not probability, but they can be easily converted to give the post-test probability of disease in your patient. So what is a likelihood ratio? A likelihood ratio is a likelihood of a given test result in patients with the disease divided by the likelihood of that same test result in patients without the disease. In other words, the likelihood of a given test result in those with disease compared to those without disease. There are two likelihood ratios for dichotomous test results. I prefer the term likelihood ratio of a positive test rather than positive likelihood ratio because it reminds me that a positive test is in the numerator and in the denominator. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is how much more likely it is to test positive if you have disease compared to not having the disease. I prefer the term likelihood ratio of a negative test rather than negative likelihood ratio because it reminds me that a negative test is in the numerator and in the denominator. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is how much more likely it is to test negative if you have disease compared to not having disease.
These are the formulas usually presented to calculate the likelihood ratios. These formulas are correct, but I find it difficult to intuitively understand what these formulas mean, so using them doesn't bring us any closer to an understanding of how to interpret a likelihood ratio. I prefer these formulas, which give you a better understanding of how to interpret a likelihood ratio. A likelihood ratio of a positive test is the likelihood of testing positive in those with disease divided by the likelihood of testing positive in those without disease. Notice the positive test is in the numerator and in the denominator. This simplifies to test positive of disease positive divided by test positive of disease negative. A likelihood ratio of a negative test is the likelihood of testing negative in those with disease divided by the likelihood of testing negative in those without disease. Notice the negative test is in the numerator and in the denominator. This simplifies to test negative of disease positive divided by test negative of disease negative. These formulas translate into the same formulas that include sensitivity and specificity, but they provide us with a better understanding of how to interpret a likelihood ratio. The highlighted ones are the ones that I use. This is our study data from which we can calculate the likelihood ratios. We can easily calculate the likelihood ratio of a positive test from a 2 by 2 table. The numerators are indicated by N1 and N2. The denominators are indicated by D1 and D2. Notice that we only use the two cells that indicate a positive test, and then the marginal totals that indicate disease positive and disease negative. The formula for likelihood ratio of positive test is N1 divided by D1, which is divided by N2 divided by D2. This translates into those with a positive test with disease divided by those with a positive test without disease. The likelihood ratio is 110 divided by 115, which is divided by 4 divided by 185. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is 45. You can easily calculate the likelihood ratio of a negative test from a 2 by 2 table. The numerators are indicated by N1 and N2. The denominators are indicated by D1 and D2. Notice that we only use the two cells that indicated tested negative, and then the marginal totals that indicate disease positive and disease negative. The denominators for likelihood ratio negative are the same denominators for likelihood ratio positive. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is 5 divided by 115, which is divided by 181 divided by 185. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is 0.04. Here are the study likelihood ratios. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is the likelihood of a positive CT scan if you have appendicitis, divided by the likelihood of a positive CT scan if you don't have appendicitis. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is 45. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is the likelihood of a negative CT scan if you have appendicitis divided by the likelihood of a negative CT scan if you don't have appendicitis. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is 0.04. Likelihood ratios are the trickiest to use in a sentence, and our simple sentence templates that we use for sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values doesn't work for likelihood ratios. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is 45. The patient is 45 times more likely to have a positive CT if they have appendicitis than not have appendicitis. The likelihood ratio of a negative test indicates that the patient is 0.04 times more likely with a negative CT scan to have appendicitis than not have appendicitis. I understand what 45 times more likely means, but I don't intuitively understand what 0.04 times more likely means. Shouldn't a negative test mean that there's less likelihood of disease? I get around this problem by taking the inverse of the likelihood ratio of a negative test. In this example, it is 1 divided by 0.04, which equals 25. 0.04 times more likely becomes 25 times less likely. I can now directly compare the two likelihood ratios. A likelihood ratio of 45 is greater than a likelihood ratio of 25, so the CT scan is a better test when it is positive than when it is negative. That is, there is a bigger change from pretest probability to post-test probability if the CT scan is positive than if the CT scan is negative. Likelihood ratios are patient-oriented. You can calculate the post-test probability of disease based on an individual patient's pretest probability of disease. Likelihood ratios indicate the degree of change in disease likelihood from pretest to post-test probability. When a likelihood ratio is less than 1, it indicates that the post-test probability is less than the pretest probability. When a likelihood ratio is equal to 1, it indicates the post-test probability is equal to the pretest probability. And when a likelihood ratio is greater than 1, it indicates that the post-test probability is greater than the pretest probability.
In general, a likelihood ratio of a positive test greater than 10 and a likelihood ratio of a negative test less than 0.1 are considered good likelihood ratios. That is, there will be a large change from pretest to post-test probability. However, the pretest probability of disease and the testing and treatment thresholds chosen will also influence how useful the likelihood ratios are. Why can't I simply multiply the pretest probability of disease by the likelihood ratios to get the post-test probability of disease for a negative test and a positive test? The answer is that it is complicated. Pretest probability is a risk. It is the likelihood of disease out of the total number of patients. Likelihood ratios are odd. It is the likelihood of a given test result in those with disease divided by the likelihood of the same test result in those without disease. They could be multiplied but must first be converted. These are the formulas used to convert risk to odds and then back. Pretest probability is first converted to pretest odds. Pretest odds is multiplied by the likelihood ratio to get a post test odds. Post test odds is then converted to a post test probability. There are much easier ways to do this. This is the Fagan likelihood ratio nomogram. It completes the process of converting probability into odds and back again to probability. You start with pretest probability the test result, positive or negative, and the likelihood ratio of a positive test and the likelihood ratio of a negative test. The result is the post-test probability of disease for both a positive test and a negative test. Inevitably, the next question is where does pretest probability come from? It may come from clinical experience, studies of differential diagnosis or disease prevalence, epidemiologic studies, and clinical prediction rules and other scoring systems such as the pediatric appendicitis score. We start with our patient's pretest probability of 20%. The likelihood ratio of a positive test is 45. For a patient with a pretest probability of 20%, the probability of having appendicitis after a positive CT scan is 95%. We again start with a pretest probability of 20%. The likelihood ratio of a negative test is 0.04. For a patient with a pretest probability of 20%, the probability of appendicitis after a negative CT scan is 1%. There is an even easier way than using the nomogram. This is the Diagnostic Test Calculator on the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine website. After completing the 2x2 two two table, the calculator provides all of the test characteristics with the 95% confidence intervals. This site also provides a graph representing the likelihood ratio of the test. Given any pretest probability and the test result, you can use the graph to determine the post-test probability of disease. We can use the graph that is specific to the likely ratios from our study to determine the post-test probabilities for our patient. Our patient had a pretest probability of 20% or 0.2. The blue line represents the post-test probability of disease if the test is positive. For a 20% pretest probability, the post-test probability of appendicitis is in the low to mid-90s. The red line represents the post-test probability of disease if the test is negative. For a 20% pretest probability, the post-test probability of appendicitis is less than 5%. Like the nomogram, this graph can be used for a patient with any pretest probability. The last thing I want to address is the process of ruling in and ruling out disease, and review the parameters that allow you to do this. To rule out disease, you would like a low post-test probability of disease. Post-test probability is equal to the pretest probability times the likelihood ratio. You can get a low post-test probability of disease with a low pretest probability a negative test result, and a small likelihood ratio of a negative test. A small likelihood ratio of a negative test can be obtained with a high sensitivity, hence the term snout for sensitivity rule out. To rule in disease, you would like a high post-test probability of disease. Post-test probability is equal to the pretest probability times the likelihood ratio. You can get a high post-test probability of disease with a high pretest probability of disease and a positive test result and a large likelihood ratio of a positive test. A large likelihood ratio of a positive test can be obtained with a high specificity, hence the term SPIN for specificity rule in. Likelihood ratios are the best test characteristics to determine the post-test probability of disease from a specific patient's pretest probability. In general, likelihood ratios of a positive test greater than 10 and the likelihood ratio of a negative test less than 0.1 are considered good results. How good a result is will depend on the patient's pretest probability and the testing and treatment thresholds. There are additional MESS minis that review other aspects of the diagnostic process. These include MESS minis on diagnostic testing thresholds, the test characteristics, sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values of a positive and a negative test, and receiver operating characteristic curves.